All right, ladies and gentlemen, that, of course, uh, was uh, Kim and Chrisette Michelle, If It's Love. Usually, when somebody says the crazy things that Kanye has said recently and has said over the course of these years, usually when somebody says things that are that outlandish, they live under a freeway underpass and they have a cardboard sign that says, Repent, Jesus is coming. <laughs> That's exactly what happens. Usually when they say those types of outlandish things, they are homeless. They push shopping carts. They beg for change. They defecate in alleys. But you know what never happens, what the result of that never is? There are never calls for prayers for them. Right now, uh, for whatever is going on with Kanye West, he has the resources to, uh, to facilitate his health, his mental health. He could do that right now. Right now, we will pray for a man who has his own mental health. His fate is in his own hands. We never do that for truly mentally ill people who are homeless. Matter of fact, if you're mentally ill and you're a celebrity, you are rewarded. Kanye specifically has been rewarded, rewarded with a $5 million PPP payment. He is rewarded with people buying his tennis shoes. He is rewarded with people coming to hear his sermons. He is rewarded with people buying his music. He's even rewarded by stealing the very outfits that homeless people are forced to wear and selling to, to, to them to the public for hundreds of dollars, but yet no prayers for them. They are truly mentally ill. And many of you, while you're praying for Kanye, will vote for people, elected officials, who will, who will, who will decide to cut the funding for mentally ill people. So while you're praying for Kanye, save a little prayer for people who actually need it. Save a little prayer for people who don't have resources. Isn't it funny how we will pray for people uh, and we will make excuses for people that we like or who we think are geniuses or whose music we feel? We will make excuses for them. Well, uh, he lost his mother, which is a tragedy. How many people on our streets right now have suffered exactly those same things? Uh, types of tragedy and have lost everything because they they lacked the mental capacity and the help to get to, to to find their way through it. How many people? How many young men and women are on our streets right now that we sent to war and the war shattered them? Do we pray for them, or do we walk past them and ignore them? Do we pretend like they doesn't exist? We, you, there are calls for sympathy. You know what homeless people get. You know what homeless mentally ill people get? Calls to the police. And they generally get shot. Per capita, they get shot more than anybody else. Because whereas you're offering understanding to a celebrity, you only offer recriminations to them. You will drive past people who actually need God to hear a demagogue tell you about God. And you will pay money to do it all of the time. Isn't it funny how the amount of remorse and, and, uh, and the amount of uh, empathy we have for people is tied directly to their Twitter feed? Isn't it, isn't it something how it's tied directly to sympathy, to, the, to, to, to what we can feel for them? It's tied to their genius. Most people, a lot of people, far too many people who are mentally ill are forced to live in, uh, under underpasses and in alleys and on our streets. They don't have mansions in Montana and Calabasas. And they don't have the sympathy and prayers of the large majority of the American people. They're not running for president. They're literally running for their lives. So the very next time that you decide that you want to have prayers for a man who has the means to take care of what is mentally ailing him, save a little for the men and women who don't. That's a little note from the GED section. We've got the Jazz Report coming up in 15 minutes. It's the D.L. Hubley Show.